Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel and welcome to machine learning tutorials on edge devices. In this tutorial we explain how to install locally and securely distilled version of DeepSeq R1 large language model on a Raspberry Pi 5 computer and on Linux Ubuntu. Furthermore, we explain how to write a simple application that will run the model in a graphics user interface that you can see over here. Namely, over here you can enter the text. For example, I ask the model how to solve the quadratic equation and after I clicked over here on the submit button, the response is generated over here and the solution is given here. Later on, you can import this solution in latex and you can nicely represent it or you can improve this simple application by integrating it with a latex interpreter such that equations are written in a nicer manner. This graphics user interface is generated by using a streamlit Python library that is running on my web browser. That is, the model is running in the background and the graphics user interface is just used to interact with the model. It is important to keep in mind that this model is being executed completely locally. That is, we are just using Raspberry Pi 5 and its CPU resources to run the model and you can run the model without internet. You will just enter this local address over here and you will start the graphics user interface. Before we explain the installation procedure, let's first talk about the hardware and software prerequisites. I'm running the model on Raspberry Pi 5, which has 8 GB RAM. Then I attach an NVMe SSD to my Raspberry Pi 5, and over here you cannot see the SSD since it's below Raspberry Pi 5. Namely, I purchased a base with an SSD connection and I attach the SSD. Over here you can see this ribbon cable attaching the SSD to Raspberry Pi 5. My suggestion to all of you is to buy an SSD since it will significantly improve read and write speed of your Raspberry Pi 5. In addition to this, I'm running everything on Linux Ubuntu 24.04. I created a separate video tutorial on how to install Linux Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi 5 and a link to that tutorial will be provided in the description below this video. Okay, let's start with installation. First of all, open a terminal. Now, over here I'm going to resize this terminal such that you can see what I'm typing and at the same time you can follow the commands which are written over here. Whenever you want to install a program or a package on Linux Ubuntu, you need to execute these two commands. These two commands will update and upgrade all the packages on your system. And consequently be patient. Next, we need to install curl. After installing curl, let's verify the curl version and to do that just type this. And you should see something like this if curl is properly installed. Next, we need to allow connections to this port over here. Don't worry, you're not opening this port or your network or your Raspberry Pi to external entities. You're just allowing Olam application, which will be used to run large language model to access this port. First of all, let's make sure that we have UFW on our system. And then let's allow connections to this port over here. The next step is to install Olama. As mentioned previously, Olama is a program that's used to host and run locally large language models. Consequently, over here, go to the main Olama website, click on download, and over here, Linux will be automatically recognized as your operating system, and you just need to execute this command in the command prompt. And this single command will install Olama on your computer. It might take a while to install Olama depending on how fast is your internet connection and consequently be patient. If Olama is properly installed, you should see this message, install complete, run Olama from the command line. Of course, I don't have NVIDIA or AMD GPU on my computer, so don't worry about this. And in, mo in your case, probably 
you will get the same message. The next step is to verify the installation. So let's do it like this. Type Olana and you should see this generic reply. If you see this reply, this means that Olama is properly installed. The next way to, or the second approach for verifying the Olama installation, you can simply type this local address in the web browser and you should see that Olama is running. The next step is to download the model. To download the model, go to the official Olama website that is go over here and search for DeepSeek R1. And over here, you have several installation options. I'm going to select the smallest distilled model since, in my opinion, this is the fastest model that can be executed on Raspberry Pi 5. I also tested the second model as well as the third and their, their inference speed is still acceptable. However, the inference speed of 14B model is not good. That is, the model is slow. Consequently, my suggestion is to try these three first models. So let's select this model and this installation command will be generated. Copy this command, go back in the command prompt, paste the command. However, don't execute it immediately. Change run to pull. So what's happening over here? By changing run to pull, we are just going to download the model. On the other hand, if you keep Olama run, you're going to download and run the model immediately. So let's run this and let's be patient since it's going to take a while to download the model. The model size is around one gigabyte. And after several minutes, you should see this success message. Let's verify that the model exists on our system. To do that, type Olama list and you should see the model over here. Next, let's test the model. To test the model, type Olama run and copy the model name and run the model. Now, it's going to take a while to load the model and once the model is loaded, let's ask a question how to solve a quadratic equation. And let's give equation something easy and let's press enter and now the model will generate the response. And you will see the reply, here it is. Let's exit the model and let's continue. To exit the model, press Ctrl D. The next step is to create a workspace folder and to create a Python code, that is to write a Python code that will create a graphics user interface. To do that, let's first make sure that we are in the home folder and let's create our workspace folder. Next, let's create a folder called test app and then let's navigate to this folder and inside of this folder, let's create a Python virtual environment. First of all, verify your Python version. Type this, however, you have to type Python 3 since you're Linux Ubuntu. Consequently, you need to type this command to make sure that the command for creating Python virtual environments is installed. Make sure that this Python version corresponds to these numbers over here and press enter. Then let's create the Python virtual environment. Execute this. And then finally, let's activate our Python virtual environment. To activate the Python virtual environment, we need to run this command. The next step is to install the necessary libraries. First of all, we need to install Olama. Olama Python library will be used to interface our Python code with Olama. And finally, we need to install Streamlit. Streamlit will be used to generate the graphics user interface. So first of all, let's install Olama. And finally, let's install Streamlit. And here it is. Okay. And finally, let's write a code that will create a graphics user interface. For that purpose, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. I created a separate video tutorial on how to install Visual Studio Code on Linux Ubuntu and a link will be provided in the description below. So let's click on File, New File, oops, wait a while until it loads. Let's go File, New File, and let's call the file as test 
1.py. Here it is. Okay. Let's save it in the workspace folder. And over here to save time, I'm simply going to paste the content of the file. Here it is. And let's explain this file line by line. First of all, we need to import Streamlit as SD, we need to import Olama, and over here we need to specify the desired model. To find the exact model name, go back to the terminal, type Olama list, and you will see the model name, copy this model name over here, paste the model name here. Next, you need to give a title to your application. I will call the application LLM application based on DeepSeek R1, running locally. And this title will appear in the heading in your graphics user interface. Next, we define a function that will generate the response on the basis of the question that the user will ask. Keep in mind that in the graphics user interface, as you have seen at the beginning of tutorial, there is a form where the user can ask text. This text will be converted to string and given to this function. Then what do we do over here? We simply call olama.chat, we specify the model, and we specify the type of message we are sending. We pass the question and that's it. And finally, we extract the, the message from the response, which is returned by olama.chat. We extract the string and this will be basically pass to ST info, which will be displayed in another print form, which is be below the input form. And then finally, we need to type this with st.form, my form. What do we do over here? We create a text form. That is, we ask a question over here, ask a question and press the submit button. This is the default text that is written in the form that the user needs to fill. Once over here, the submit button is being pressed. What happens? Submitted becomes yes. That is, this is executed. And what do we do? We generate this function over here and we call large language model. Simple as that. Let's save this file and let's learn how to run this file. To run this code, let's go back to the terminal. Let's make sure that the file is there. Make sure that you save the file. And to run this code, you need to do the following. You need to type this streamlit run, and then you need to specify the name of the file with the absolute path. So let's copy this path over here and the name of the file test1.py and let's run it. So what will happen now? After a few programs are installed, you'll see that the local host will be opened and over here you will be able to run the application. So let's start with the basic question and let's ask a question, who are you? And press enter and let's see the response. Now you can see that the model is running and let's see the response. And after some time you will get this response. This means that you have properly installed the model. Next, I will explain how to start the model after you restart the computer or after you close the terminal. First of all, let's learn how to stop the model. Go back here and press Ctrl C and you will stop the model and after that you can safely close your web browser. Let's deactivate. Oops, this is not what I want. It's kind of updating, so let me hide this. Let me just deactivate the environment and let's close the terminal. And let's imagine right now that you restarted your computer and you want to start the model. To start the model, click here, open the terminal, go to the home folder and navigate to test app. And then over here, you need to activate the virtual environment. To activate the virtual environment, you just need to execute this command. That is, you don't need to create the actual virtual environment. Just run this command and you will see that virtual environment is active. And now you can simply run the code by typing streamlit run test1.py bang. And let's see what happens. You can see that streamlit is running. 
you just need to basically open this port or it will automatically be opened and over here Streamlit will be loaded and you can start again typing your model and typing the questions over here. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe button and see you in the next video tutorial.